If you're considering buying Google Glass for any reason, I'm gonna try and talk you out of it. I'm John P. Ah! Mark your calendars, folks, because this is the first time we've ever dedicated an episode to telling people not to buy a product. That's not to say that we like everything. We tested at least a thousand products that we've never shared with you because they didn't meet our expectations for one reason or another. We'd rather spend time recommending good stuff than tell you what not to buy. But I'm going to make an exception for Google Glass because I honestly believe it is the single worst product I've ever experienced. And I'm pretty sure it'd be a terrible mistake for the vast majority of you to buy one, so I'm gonna start telling you why. You, you don't think the home col colostomy kit was pretty bad? <laughs> that was pretty bad, but this is worse. This is Google Glass. It may look different than other versions you've seen because three months ago I bought the prescription version. What that means is that I sent Google $1,715.76 of my own hard-earned money. I waited for the order to arrive and then I had to take it to an optometrist where I paid hundreds more and then waited for custom lenses to be fitted. Weeks after the initial purchase, I was finally able to put them on for the first time and the disappointment was nearly instantaneous. Oh, by the way, you should know right up front that Google only has a 30-day return policy from the time you receive your glass. So if it takes a couple of weeks to get in to see the optometrist and another couple of weeks for the lenses to be made, as soon as you put glass on for the first time, it's too late to return it even if you were willing to throw away the hundreds of dollars you spent making the custom lenses. Now, if you wear glasses, I want you to imagine the biggest, heaviest glasses you ever purchased, then imagine something heavier. That's glass. If you don't wear glasses all the time, this might be a little difficult to understand, but heavy glasses can cause pain on your nose that quickly turns to discomfort that can leave you miserable, bothered, and with a headache. On top of that, heavy glasses don't want to stay on your face. If you engage in any sort of sporty activity, the mass just doesn't want to stay put. Even bending over at the waist and looking down makes glass feel unstable. It, doesn't, it, it feels like it's going to slip off your face entirely. And that can happen, especially if you're hot and sweaty. One possible solution would be to choose lighter frames, but there aren't any. In fact, there are only four choices. Now, when you buy traditional frames, they can be infinitely adjusted. Even hard plastic frames can be softened in a hot box filled with glass beads and then bent to shape. But you simply can't adjust glass like this. Instead, they give you tiny wire arms with little nose pads as the only adjustment method, and it just doesn't work well. Not to mention the fact that the nose pads are the worst way to suspend the heaviest glasses you'll ever wear. Right about now, you might be thinking, okay, I didn't expect a piece of technology to be all that comfortable. I just want it to work. Well, that's what I was thinking, at least, when I first started wearing them. But then I quickly discovered they don't even live up to those most basic of expectations. What I mean is, if you go to Walmart and spend $99 on a cheap Android tablet, it will literally do everything better than your $2,000 Google Glasses. For example, the battery life is nothing less than abysmal. The battery won't last more than a few hours at most. And if you try and take a lot of photos or videos, you can literally wear out the battery in 45 minutes. Seriously, I went from fully charged to virtually dead in under an hour. What's the solution for that? Don't use them? Even in an absolutely best case scenario where you're hardly doing anything with them, they won't even last six hours. Think about that. Now you have to start planning out which part of your day you want to use your glasses. But it gets worse. You can't turn off and charge glasses. I, I mean that. You can't turn them off. I mean, you could turn them off, but as soon as you plug them into charge, they turn on. And it's impossible to ever know if they're really off. So let's say you had some important event you wanted to use them for and you charge them up with the intention of leaving them off and turning them on right before you need them. Well, it's just not gonna work, not reliably, because they just turn on randomly and there isn't a power switch where you can make sure that you aren't using the power. It's just impossible. 
Essentially, glass has only two power states, plugged in or near death. Right now, some of you are probably saying, well, I only really need to use the glass function occasionally. I've got other glasses I'll wear most of the time. That's what I used to think too. But then I found out that glass is magically crash-tastic. There are so many times when I tried to do something very simple, like take a photo or video, and glass simply didn't respond to anything. It's supposed to turn on when you tilt your head or when you tap them with your finger, but frequently nothing will make them respond at all. You just have to try and reboot. Keep in mind that a reboot of glass will take about 10 minutes, maybe more. First, it takes glass minutes to start up, but then it takes several more minutes before you can do something like simply snap a photo. Well, if it takes 10 to 15 minutes to get to the point where I can take a photo or video and the battery's only gonna last an hour, you can see how that would really get frustrating and eventually not be worth it, right? But it gets worse because if you're gonna take a picture or shoot a video, you probably want the image to at least be straight, right? But the way the frames are built, the screen and the camera are physically crooked. They're only horizontally adjustable, no vertical adjustment whatsoever. Who in God's name invented that? This means that if your ears are a little higher or lower on one side or the other, you will not be able to see the screen appropriately. It also means it's impossible to wear the glasses and have the display actually be horizontally level. That's right, when they're on my head, like right now, they are crooked. So if you want to shoot something, you're going to have to walk around holding your head next, you know, crooked to compensate, which makes you look like an idiot and also hurts your neck. Speaking of hurting, glass uses a little bone conduction speaker right back here that barely kind of does the job of letting you hear things as long as there isn't too much noise. But I sprung for the add-on earbuds. Little did I know they'd be the most uncomfortable earbuds I've ever used in my life. I think I'd rather have one of those SETI eels from the Wrath of Khan inserted in my ear. And they're USB. Not only is the interface non-standard for no good reason, but if you have them on, you can absolutely not charge the glasses while using them because they all share one, the one and only USB port. Why? I mean, seriously, why didn't they just include a standard earphone jack? Of course, if you were gonna listen to music, you'd run out of battery so fast, you'd have to take them off long before the music ended just to recharge them. An iPod or cell phone is far better suited. I could go on about how these glasses won't fold closed, which makes storing them difficult, and just a bunch of other things, but really, I hope you've heard enough. I can't not recommend Google Glass enough. Good answer. I like the way you think. I wish someone had told me all of this before I dropped over $2,000. Hopefully, it helps other people. Tweet me at John Pose if it helps you, or if you totally disagree, let me know why, what value you see. That might be the only value I get from spending the money on these things. So, to sum it all up, a couple of weeks ago at the Wearable Technologies Conference in San Francisco, Babak Parviz, who headed up development of the product at Google until he quit to go to Amazon, said, Google Glass is one answer to that question. It's not necessarily the definitive answer. The problem is, it's a very bad answer to a question most people simply aren't asking. I'm guessing we're 10 years away from a viable connected heads-up display device that'll really enable augmented reality, social and creative recording capabilities, and general voice command functionality. Until then, these are just expensive gadgets for bleeding edge early adopters with too much money on their hands. So if you've got expendable cash and you want to show the world how geeky you are, maybe you can buy a Geek Beat mug or something. I'm John P. See you next time. Is everyone around here is so fine.
Absolutely. lenses that we use all the time from Rokinon that are cine lenses and look stunning. 